How are we looking on the on the laptop over there? We live? Good. I only see BYG beyond the game picture. Okay. You're live, but it's just a placeholder. Gotcha. So. Oh, so this is very like. This isn't. You know, we're we're all talking. This yeah, is like fun. you're allowed to interact. Can they hear you. Yeah. They can. Oh wow, well, that's great. See, I like this. So, cl so he's he's. Casual. I feel like used to the traditional television. Cliff, Cliff, you want to give him a little insight on on how live TV is a little different? Yeah, it's very different. It's much more. Well, it depends on what you're doing, but it's a lot more informal. Right. I like that. Yeah. And I'm all about informalities. It's okay if, if you feel like you make a mistake because it's much more authentic. Mm. Don't worry about oh, we have to do a recut or retake on that because it is what it is. And yeah. People like the authenticity, and they also like um, if there's like a mistake, they're like, "What's going to happen next?" <laughs> nice. And they like that. Is this going to snowball? It's also two way. Yeah. You're right. People will ask questions and make comments, so it's much more interactive. And do I have to take off the logo? Do I, do I have to take off the logo, or are we? No. no. Yeah, we're gonna take it over. Bad joke. No. No, no. We're product placement's good. It's <laughs> part. It's part of live streaming. Yeah. That's how we get sponsors. We just having. No. Then forget it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Take the shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Go inside out. I could. Okay. If I had to. But it's, um, it's also your viewer feels more connected because they get to ask questions and be part of the show. I'm psyched. This is great. So we're live right now. We got you on officially. This is Mike Slippo, everyone. <laughs> wow. Guys, it's done. That might be the first round of applause I ever got. You, really? Nah. Come on. Well, maybe. We'll see. You gotta, you you're you're a stud high school run. athlete. Talk, let's talk about your history. Talk about, you're now a college lacrosse coach at BU, but you obviously didn't just, you weren't just born into this world like, hey, I'm a coach. <laughs> Even though your dad was probably like, it would be pretty cool if my son's a coach. Talk about how you ended up in that, in that, uh, that shirt there. Sure. Um, Followed my father around. So my dad was uh, coached for 49 years at Deerfield Academy mm -hmm. and Tabor Academy, a uh, little NEPSAC, which is New England Private School Athletic Conference. Um, Deerfield Academy is in God's Country, Western Mass. And, uh, I thought Long Island was God's Country. No, that's like third or fourth, but um, I know the audience might not like that. It's probably <laughs> behind upstate New York a little bit. And you put it. I know, I'm teasing you. Um, it's there. It's a great place. It's my second home. Due to the wink offs, if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, you got like a beach, um, you got a beach home, you got a place in, in yeah. Boston, and you got a beach house yeah, in uh, yeah, Long Island. Yeah. Well, this is more about me. Can we get back Sorry. to my story? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, so, yeah, so followed my dad around coaching football. That was fun since I was a little kid. Went to Williston, Northampton, played football, basketball, lacrosse. Uh, ended up lucky enough to go to Ithaca College, play lacrosse there for Jeff Long, the legend. Um, was there, obviously, for four years. Uh, graduated with a sports studies degree and a minor in coaching. So it's not that obvious that you graduate in four years? <laughs> well, you never know. Some people don't. One of my best friends took him more than four, you know? We will, he'll go unnamed, but it took him more than four. And then... Uh, Bombers usually five-year guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of it's an unwritten rule. Yeah, you know? I got you. And then I uh, coached football and lacrosse at Williams College. I was the running backs coach and the film coordinator for, for three years for the football team. And then was the D coordinator my first year at Williams, moved on to the offense when Coach Klipstein, Klipstein left for UPenn. And then um, I got the Ithaca job in January 2014. Went over there and started coaching with Coach Long as, as co-coaches, as he liked to say. Um, I ran a lot of the offense and the defense and the ride and the man down. He really let me coach, which was fun. Um, and he you was were number one in the country for the first time in Ithaca College history. What sure year was, was that? That so you were number one. Uh, 2016. We won 18. We were two and one. Lost to RPI. They punched us in the mouth. Woke us up. And then we won 18 straight and ran into Tufts. And they uh, showed me what culture really meant. You what know? do you mean? What do you mean by culture? Uh, culture's king. You know, I, I would still to this. We, so we had the defensive player of the year, Eli Goldberg, who covered Jordan Wolf in the MLL championship game last year. He was the defensive player of the year my last year. We had um, Sidman, who was the goalie of the year, goaltender of the year from West Jenny. Um, he had an excellent year, and I would still take that roster over John Upgren's tough senior year roster, you know, even after the game. We lost 19-8, I believe. So you're saying on paper you feel as though that Ithaca team yeah. was maybe a little bit more talented. Yeah, than I would team. still take them at the time, and I remember emailing Coach Daly on the way home, Western Mass guy. Um, emailing him on the way home, tell, thanking him for the lesson he taught me about culture. Before I sent the email to you, Wink, and the alumni. And that was the best email we've ever received. I've been out of college 36, at that time, 33 years, 34 years. It was the best email. I had my buddies. 
from the 83 class saying, who is this Mike Slippo? They loved it. Because <laughs> he just basically talked about how he got, got punched in the mouth and he learned a lesson. But I still, I still hear that all the time. Like some teams have developed this great culture. Some teams are lacking culture. What is culture? Can you, what is your definition of culture? Oh, jeez. Um, you know, when everyone buys into one, one mission, one, you know, they're all making sacrifices for the greater good, as you call it, right? I mean, what, what, what's the prize? Is it the Patriot League Championship? Is it the NCAA Championship? Is it, you know, winning one game? Is it catching the, you know what I mean? It's, it's doing every little thing so that the big things can take care of themselves. And it's doing it without an ego, you know, without worrying about what Coach Wink thinks or your mother thinks or your mother's mother thinks. You know, and you're doing it f for you, you know, for your teammates and, you know, you're putting, you know, I aside, you know, and you're doing it for, for, for everyone else. And you're making sacrifices outside yourself for someone else. And that makes it a whole lot easier to be successful if you're able to do that. So as a college coach, cl culture is clearly important. How do, you, how do you develop culture? Like, wh what are some things that, that you can do as a college coach to, to build this? You got to find the right guys. That's why I'm on Long Island every, every summer. I heard you have some good Long Island guys coming in next so year. We got a couple. We got a couple. Louis Perfetto, if that's what you're trying to like get me into that here. Uh, I mean, you can name so him. We got a couple. He's pretty um, good. We're, we're, we're trying to win the island and, and stay here and, and get good players here. Um, but you get good kids here, you know, you, for the most part. Um, you get good families here, which is important. You need parents who understand you know, what they're in for, for four years, and that it's more than just a four-year decision because it's a 40-year decision, you know, outside of the job, the culture, the things that you're going to learn, you know, so from those coaches. That's it. I really like that point. Let's you're, talk you're about You're interrupting this. me here. This is good, though. This is good. This is how I'm we gonna work. I'm going to interrupt you all day. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. One, to just get under your skin, and two, because <laughs> it's just part of the, what you I have to do You could get under here. my skin real quick. Just bring up, you know, Chris, and you'll, you'll get We'll talk there, about that later. All right, all right. All right. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to do that too soon because then we'll spoil we it. Oh, I love you too much. That's great. I want to see you turn red because you got a nice bronze tan from hanging out in Suffolk tryouts mm -hmm. and you look good. Yeah. Parents, you said, what are they getting into for four years? What is a parent's role for a kid who's a Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NCA lacrosse student athlete for four years? Like, do parents do nothing? Do parents email you and get super involved in decision making? Talk about what a parent's role is in your experience, maybe where you are currently or where you've been in the past for four years. Um, at Ithaca, Jeff had it the best, and maybe that's because the parents were, were borderline afraid of him, but they, they, they stayed away in a lot of ways. Um, they Which let, was good for the kids? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, um, classic, you, you know, it cut the umbilical cord, let them go, you know. They're 18-year-olds. They're, they're technically adults. They need to allow their athletic trainer to give their parents information when they get hurt, right? So, so that, that's, there's a first thing, you know what I mean? Um, when you're technically you're 18, you know, they don't have... When I got hurt, you know, my trainer couldn't answer the phone call for my father. It was like, well, what happened to my son? It's like, well, you can ask Mike to give me permission to tell you, mm -hmm. you know, because you're an adult now, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever that means. But um, it, it's, uh, you know, the head coach's dad, you know, Coach Poley's dad. For, for nine, when, you, when you step on campus, he's your father, you know, and, and Coach Silbs and I are the cool uncles, you know, you know what I mean? So that's um, your family. That's your family. We're the ones who are going to, you know, mom and dad are still there and they're home and they're a phone call away. Um, but they should be encouraging you to follow y your family that's there, you know. Um, are you okay with parents who get involved with maybe supporting before and after games, February scrimmages, they set up tailgates? Like, like Yeah, that's important. Like tailgates that, are important. That's a big part of the yeah, culture? Yeah, I think that's important. I think, you know, the Boston Union, or... Uh, the family at, you know, at all these lacrosse schools, institutions, colleges, whatever you might call them, um, y your parents are part of that family. Th right. That's important. You know, at the end of the day, most of them are paying the bill, you know, so mom and dad are important, and it's important that they come to games and support your kids and support the team and, and what, you're, what you're buying into, what you're playing for. Um, but at the end of the day, they, we get paid to do this, right? So, so we make the decisions, and... What our community needs to understand is people are now getting fired for the decisions that they're making, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of great coaches who, who have lost their jobs um, aren't making enough money to be under the pressure um, to win the games that, that we need to win or to create the experience that, you know, we're, we're being forced. And we should create a great experience, but 
um, that that's the goal. The student athlete experience is extremely important, but do you have you any know, stories of fired for it? It's it's, you, it's amazing. You, so like you talk about how you guys you need to be in control because you have obviously a lot on the line, which right. makes sense, and that's yep. obviously a lot of pressure, and it, it's difficult. I mean, do you have a story of a parent possibly spoiling a kid's experience or getting in the way to the point where it's disrupting the the flow of a team, the success of a team? You know, you guys being able to meet your goals as a team. Well, let me let me back up to the community thing. Let me just back up my point a minute. So we, we are getting paid for the student athlete experience, and we're on pressure under pressure not only to win games, yeah, but to make sure you have a three O GPA as a team or higher and to make sure that you are staying out of trouble in the community, yep. right? Whether that's, you know, regardless, even when you go home. Right, school you know, community, yeah, dorms, any community. or at home, Correct. In, your, in your own. And, and that falls on us, right. you know, and, and that's important with the recruiting process and finding the right kids and um, finding the right families that, that are going to allow you to be successful during those, those four years. Um, it's crazy. We rely on 16 to 23-year-old kids for our livelihood. Mm -hmm. How many other jobs in the world can you say that? You know, um, that that's, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why you got to pick the right families. Yeah, you know, and we, you know, there's people making a lot more money with, than us that aren't being with those kids as much as we are. And it's, uh, you know, that's why we do what we love. You know, there, there's a value outside of the dollars you're making. Why do you um, love coaching? This, to be with the kids. You know, it's great being with kids. It's great competing. I'm a washed up athlete now, you know. So Men's league final on Sunday. We won. Mikey, you'd be happy with that, but, uh, but that's it. Hoops. hoops. Now lacrosse, I'm, I was an average player. But, uh, yeah, hoops. That's all I got left. You know? Dude, but so that's it. So you're living through the kids now vicariously? Yeah, vicariously, competing through them. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. So I, I don't really know if I have a specific story of a parent that got in the way. Um, the, the head coaches I have worked for have all been masters of the trade at keeping parents at bay and, mm -hmm. and allowing them to communicate to a point. Um, but drawing that line where it's th this is, you know, you just you decide to allow your son to play for me yeah. and, I, and to be in my program. So yeah. let, let's let's stop here. You know, George McCormack was exceptional at it. He gave me my first lesson um, on that just because parents were calling asking about playing time or at a tailgate. They asked, why isn't my son playing? And he always just say, Mike, if anyone ever says that, you tell him to come talk to me. You know, because I was the office coordinator my second year and he was, you know, he allowed me to make the decision as to who played, but mm -hmm. if anybody questioned why his son wasn't playing, he was like, you defer that to me. I'll always answer that for you. Mm -hmm. That's not your job to answer that question. Right. You know, and Coach Long, we never had that, you know. Parents never talked to us at Ithaca. It was beautiful. They, as a, have you ever said to a parent, um, why don't you ask your son? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think you Coach, so this is the lesson that Coach McCormack said. If we're ever going to talk about playing time or talk outside with your parents, he needed to be there. Your son needs to be there. And whether that's a phone conference or whatever it might be, we'll put, you know, he's there. Mm -hmm. You know, whoever Joe Schmo is or Jimmy or whatever it is, he's in the room. Usually the parent's like, well, if he knew I was talking to you, he'd kill me. That's, it, that's, that's, act, that's the next thing. You right. say, well, well, you know, Jimmy doesn't want to know that I'm calling you. Well, then we shouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. And if it ain't bothering right. Jimmy that much, why is it bothering you so much? Right. Sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard yeah. Uh, a college coach I was talking to recently, she's actually a female coach, uh, D Division three program, she, she made a very interesting point how if you don't do what you said, use the metaphor of cutting the umbilical cord too early, that transition from high school to college in that freshman year is much, much more difficult. Have you experienced in the past maybe this, yes. this next wave of recruits, a little more difficult that transition or, or what? Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, but everyone's going to call mom and dad. I mean, I remember calling my father in February for four years telling him how hard it was to play at Ithaca College for Coach Long but I, but I loved it and every time we'd finish the conversation he'd say toughen up <laughs> you know <laughs> or he'd say you do this because you love it you know um, and, and whether you wanted to hear it or not it was it was the truth mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day that that's you know parenting is I'm not a parent so I wouldn't know but you know tell them the hard truths and, and yeah cutting the umbilical cord is important mm -hmm. you know allowing them to become their own person you know, you that's why college is great. Yeah, damn, essentially. You're I'm a damn good one. Uh, thanks, Mikey. No, you are. You're um, a good parent because I know, I know the kids that have played for you, and they all love you, and, and part of being a good parent, and they, and they know you when you're upset, there's a reason for it. True, yeah. There's, there's a time and a place to, to get in an ear, you know. Um, what do you look for in a recruit and a recruit's family? Give me some positives. It's hard to, there, there's a lot that we can coach. 
you know, especially at Division One level, we, we have so much time in the fall to do individual skills, to hit the wall, to shoot, to do X, Y, and Z, the things that you look for, that we all look for, the things you can't really coach, toughness, IQ, um, you know, what are they willing to sacrifice between the line for that ball on the ground or for their teammate who they might be setting a pick for um, or sitting having a nice cut to or just, you know, putting the ball in the net. Um, those are the types of things you look for. Mm -hmm. It's easy to see who runs like a deer mm -hmm. and who can cut in the dime, um, who has both hands or who has snap. You, you know, those things are easy. When, when you do that for three, four years, you really can, you can pick that up and see that pretty quick. Um, you know, at the, at the tryouts today, you, you know who the ACC Big Ten kids are in the first 15 minutes mm -hmm. um, of the tryout today, you know. Um, <clears throat> but it's the, it's, it's the, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Um, but it's, uh, or, or the Patriot League kid, you know, right, Mike? Yeah, um, absolutely. I'm going to get, I'm going to uh, get you on that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a bunch of uh, prospective BU Terriers today. Yeah, yeah, Patriot League's a great league. And, um, <laughs> and, uh. It's an academic. Right? So you look for that stuff. You know, you look for that. How does a kid know if he's a... This is easy. Division he's one. How does he know if he's a Division one kid? Because a Division one lacrosse coach, right, who's getting paid to do this, is talking to you personally, yeah. speaking to you about... And what if you're, too, what if you're too young? Or, what if you're too young? If you're too young... Um, what typically happens to a kid who's, a let's say, a sophomore right now or a freshman, and he's a stud? The most we can talk to anyone under, um, you know, junior year before September 1 uh, is, is basically you can get a generic email um, and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yep. I, can, I can tell uh, or talk to a club coach um, about kids, but I can't tell you to inform or to communicate with any of your kids about what I think about them. You can ask me questions and I can answer them, um, but I, I can't tell you whether I like, you know, anybody really. Um, or what I'm going to do after September 1 or, um, you know, and some compliance directors look at it differently, I'm sure, um, just because that, that's what the NCA is, mm -hmm. you know, um, there's, there's a wide, there's a lot of different people looking at one rule and what it looks like and what it is, um, and then there's one person who wrote the rule, right, mm -hmm. and they look at it in a specific way as well, and so what's gray, what's white, and what's black, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, 21 can get a generic email and, and that's it, and then come September 1 and this new recruiting world you know it's like the mad race to you know are you gonna stay up at midnight and, and get texts and phone calls are you gonna you know last year I, I went to sleep because I had to bike 100 miles the next day for bike to beach yep. which is a great organization and we we do that as a team um, so I, I was asleep getting ready to get up at 4 a.m. to bike 100 miles but um, you know it's such an overrated day wink um, but yes, it's, it uh, it's and, and parents get so angst from it Oh, my kid didn't get a call. My kid didn't get an email. My kid didn't get a text. And then they're stressing out. And in reality, you know, a week later. Yeah, it's overrated. It's amazing. But that, that is what it is. It's, that's, that's what the September 1 has done to us. And that is, you know, what our community has done. Mm -hmm. You know, our community has, has put this extreme importance of September 1. And if you're a good player or you're not, it's, that is what it is, you know. Um, which is unfortunate, yeah. Because um, there's a lot of great players that are going NESCAC and are going, you know, Ithaca College and RIT. I ran into Coach Bevel today at Cortland, right? There's a lot of great institutions out there. Mm -hmm. um, Union, Coach Witherford, the boys, the Dutchman, right? You know, there's a great, a lot of great schools out there, and you're not getting a call from them on September 1st. Right. You might, and I think you know, at the end of the day, Division Three doesn't really have rules, um, but. Uh, so do you feel as though now that the process and some of the rules have changed and, you know, the fact that kids are getting recruited a little bit later, they're making decisions when they have a better understanding of what they want to do and they're transferring less, or is that still existing? Transfers. Um, there's still people transferring, that's for sure. Um, well, you just lost a big transfer, obviously, yeah, which I'm sorry to hear about. Yeah, it's too bad. Great kid, though. Talk about why, why people transfer. Why does that happen sometimes? Uh, there's, a multiple, there's, there's multiple reasons why people transfer, you know, whether they're unhappy, they don't like the academic institution, they can't do the work, um, it's not a, the culture isn't a fit, mm -hmm. some people don't want to, you know, some people aren't willing to put in the work, some people want to do more, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had a couple guys who said they wanted to do more. That what does that mean, do more? Work more, harder in the weight room. Um, they want to do more work in the weight room, literally. They're like, we just didn't work out hard enough, so we want to work harder, you know. And what we're, our individuals, so individuals are, um, you're allowed 
you know, X amount of weeks in the fall of full 20 hours, which is what we're allowed, mm -hmm. you know, per week. Yeah, that's what we're allowed after, you know, you know, most people start early January. Um, in the fall, outside, you get six weeks or five weeks of that. Outside of that, you're allowed eight hours, and you can split that eight hours into four and four, mm -hmm. strength and conditioning, or four hours in the field. We do three and five, so three hours in the field, um, five hours in the weight room or conditioning. Um, and a lot of people weren't doing enough. Mm -hmm. They, you know, not enough in that three hours. And I, I can't swear, but I kick your butt in that in that three hours during that week. That that's the hardest time in our year. And so people were, ask, you know, some of our guys didn't like. I, we got a, a, a St. A's boy who came to us, um, and I remember asking him, because he went to a great school and a great offense, um, and he was like, well, we, we, did, we didn't do stuff like this. You know, they did more holistic things, um, and I, I work on the parts, you know, and, and beat them up. Mm -hmm. We work pretty hard yeah. in the fall so that the spring's easy. You know, Coach Long used to always say, you know, practice is our time, so game day can be your time. And we're going to make this time really hard. Mm -hmm. So that when you're playing against RIT, it's easy. How you do you know, know you're recruiting a kid who's going to be able to work that hard in college? What are the things you look for in a high school kid that's like, oh, that kid works hard enough? I think you talk to them them. about it. Yeah, you ask them what they're doing. You know, what club program they're coming from. What's their high school coach say? Um, but at the end of the day, when I'm when I'm walking them up and down campus and I'm telling them what we're doing, um, and then they talk to our guys about what we do, mm -hmm. you know, or and I like a lot of kids to come see what we do, mm -hmm. um, you know, th that you get a feel for it. Right. You know, we, we create relationships with hundreds, uh, you know, thousands of people, whether it's parents or kids, and so you get a feel on how to read people mm -hmm. and whether or not they're, they're telling you the truth or, or they're not. And, and you can get stumped from time to time, that happens um, for sure, or they get influenced by someone outside of you um, that drives them in a different direction um, but but most of the times you're right you, you've been doing it long enough you've met with people long enough um, and if you can create those relationships the kids gonna want to work play for you mm -hmm. every place I've been at um, you know I'm selling me first because at the end of the day you're gonna be with me mm -hmm. a lot <laughs> so you better like me <laughs> you better believe in me you know because at the end of the day you're gonna do what I tell you to do and if you don't you're not going to play on Saturday. I tell my guys that all the time. It's like, you know, practice is my time, and what we do in practice dictates what we do in the games, and who plays well during this time dictates who plays on Saturday, mm -hmm. period. Because that's essentially part of what I get, you know, paid for, right? Well, you've also, I'm sure, seen success with that approach, right? Because sure, I'm if a, you didn't, then why would you continue to run your program that way. Maybe I'm arrogant, I don't know, but uh, I just come from an Maybe old school Italian. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so right. I come from an old school Italian who did it one way and you know, that's just the way I keep doing it, just old school and What old school Italian are you referring to? Mike Salippo, Michael Salvatore. Michael Salvatore 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 Salvatore? Yeah, I'm not a junior. That's your father, not grandfather? Uh, no, that's my father. That's your yeah. father. Yeah, Michael Salvatore. What else have you? A little bit about your dad. Talk yeah. about what, I mean, I know you mentioned he was a coach for 49 years. Where did he coach? So my the father. The fames that he's in. I'm sure, going, sure, I sure, sure. Brag, but I know he's a special man in your life. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah, he's the biggest mentor in my life. Um, so Michael Salvatore Salippo grew up in Ozone Park um, under Sal Salippo, who owned a welding shop um, in Jamaica. Yeah, Jamaica, Queens. Yeah, Jamaica. And, um, you know, did work on, you know, a lot of people's cars during that time. Um, my father ended up getting out. So he was the youngest of three. Uh, he went to Hobart, played football there, um, played football and baseball, ended up getting a trial for the Phillies, blew his knee out, um, ended up then going to coach at Tabor Academy. Um, he was, tw so he graduated high school at 16, graduated college at 20. He was coaching at Tabor Academy as the head coach at 22 years old and then coached for 49 years. So he was at Tabor Academy for 28, Deerfield for 21, and um, he's still coaching now, coaching squash, but he's retired. He coached, uh, or excuse me, he taught um, U.S. history, uh, Western Civ, um, loved it, loved teaching, and then he coached football and squash, did a little golf from here to here, did some lacrosse as well. Um, but mostly football. So he's in the uh, New England Private School um, Athletic Conference Hall of Fame. Um, he's the all-time winningest coach in, in the NEPSAC um, with 200-something wins, which is pretty cool. They only play eight games a year. Um, the he, championship game's named after him, which is pretty sweet. What's the name of that game? It's called the Salippo Bowl for five really? years. The ga yeah, the, yeah well, for we five years. One year. Yeah, we do. We need yeah. to leave. But it's during, it's during probably during FLG and 3D yeah. fall. 
bash, but uh, yeah, the last well, year I'll be there for sure. That's all. <laughs> yeah, let's get it. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. That's a good idea. Uh, watch him, you know. So, but uh, yeah, no, he's great, and he, uh, you know, I'm 10 years old. Oh, I'm sick, Dad. I don't want to go to school. No, no, no. You're going to school. You know, you're going to school because you got to learn how to be successful even when you're sick. <laughs> you know, because you know, oh, well, you don't want to practice today, Mike. Oh, that's too bad. You know, no, no, no. You're gonna go practice. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'll never, I mean, I called him. Where are those parents? Did, did, are they gone off the earth? No, they're not gone. There's, there's like two out of every hundred. They're still here. There's an excuse for everything today. I'm sick of excuses. Sure. Yeah, no doubt. He, didn't let, you, he didn't let you have excuses? No, he didn't let me have excuses. You know, excuses are, uh, you know, adversity comes in life all the time, every day, you know. Um, you know, every, every day. You know, Chris Gray calls me, says, hey, coach, mm -hmm. you know. This isn't working for me anymore, you know, and, and I How do you get absolutely that? love Chris, but that's just, that's part of life. Stuff happens every day, <laughs> you know, uh, every day. And, and sure, selfishly, is my, you know, is our offense a little different? No, no doubt. But am I like, I got to move on, you know, and, and the last conversation I had with Chris, he ended it with, I love you, coach. And I ended it with, I love you, Chris. And that was hard, you know, um, but that's, you know, I, I would be, you know, we can jump into it. I would be. A hypocrite to say that you know Chris Gray can't make a decision for Chris Gray. You know we talk about our, you know the culture that I believe in, um, is you know people first, players second. And so Chris Gray wanted to take care of Chris Gray, and, and that's what he did. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, it's it's hard. Life happens. You know, okay, great. What am I going to do? Roll over and die? No, I'm still alive. I'm breathing. I do what I love. I get to hang out with you know I get to call Wink off right after it happens, um, or the the boss who I love working for and. Uh, my family who supports me, my wonderful girlfriend who puts up with me, right? You know, life goes on. That's what it is, you know, and you just got to learn from it, grow from it, and keep moving, mm -hmm. you know, because life goes on. You know, it's the father time doesn't stand still just because something just happened to you, you know. That's just the way it is, and you can't, you can't change that. Well, if you're going to teach your kids to deal with adversity, doesn't the uh, dad and the mom have to deal with adversity? I mean, we're all... For sure. We all have adversity. Everyone's affected by it, but 100%. But it makes you stronger. Certainly, you know. We um, we only have about two minutes left. Whoa! And uh, I know it flies when you're having fun. Well, yeah, I don't even think we answered any of your questions. No, we got there. Right. We got there. And uh, what do you want? You don't even realize what you've what you've answered without even me well, asking. Well, that's just because I just talk, you know. No. Are you okay with that? You guys, then people knocking their heads. We're really you know? good with it. Being it's just real part, is it's the just most part of the show. Thing. That's the whole live thing we were talking about, right? That's the whole. That's that's yeah. it. Just that's the beauty of it. There's a lot of authenticity. Well, what do you want? We got a minute 30 now. We just wasted another 30 seconds. Well, I, didn't even, I didn't even talk. Like, I think I should talk a little bit why I like you so much. Oh, you don't need to do that. You don't want me to? You can't tell. People can't just tell from our conversation that I was like, why do I'm that I like, like you. Why? I can pretend like I, <laughs> I, do, I like you and I really don't. That's sure. No, you can't. And I think this live streaming thing's really good for Mike because he's very authentic in my opinion. I think it's, you know, you hear it all the time, like, people that tell it as it is. Not a lot of people do that. And a lot of people also... They don't always wear their emotions on their sleeves because they're worried about what other people might think. They're worried about maybe saying something wrong. I feel like that's not really you. I feel like kind of who you are is, is who you are, if yeah. that makes sense. That's why people either refreshing. like me or don't. There's no one in the middle. Yeah. And I like it that way. It's great. So you don't like gray after all. It's black and white. Ah, that's right. Well, I like Chris Gray, but I don't like gray. I know you're doing the color, and you see what Whoa, you're trying I, to do I wasn't there. talking about Chris. Oh, I just thought that's where we went. No. So, <laughs> if there's a lacrosse, if there's a lacrosse recruit Thank out you. there that's watching this, yeah. what can they be doing right now to help themselves get recruited, and maybe feel free to talk about things that you see that you don't like in a lacrosse recruit when you're on the recruiting. First trail. thing, do well in school. That's going to open any opportunity and every opportunity. Do well in school, and then you know, listen to the people that you trust. You know, listen to the people who are going to coach you hard and work you hard and teach you how to be successful, which is putting in the work to, to earn something down the road, you know, because nothing's going to just be handed to you. Mm -hmm. That's not how life is. And if it is, when adversity hits, you're going to be in trouble right. because you're not going to know how to handle that. Yeah. So. That's beautiful. Any questions that come in that we need to bring up? Because... Mike's ready to answer him. No, no. The only question I have for him is, uh, you know, he spends a lot of time on Long Island recruiting Long Island kids. Why? Why Long Island kids? Well, the big reason why I got this job, Mike, is because when, when Coach Poley called you or you guys talked and you, you know, gave a couple names and you gave my name. and So I figured I had to, you know, keep coming to Long Island to get these kids, you know, <laughs> ever since you, get, you know, helped me get the job. Yeah, to keep, keep the bomber happy, the first ten happy. Um, 
but no, I just think Long Island is, is the most recruited area in the country, you know, that and probably Maryland, the MIAA, but what's different between the MIAA and Long Island is just the, there are so many more kids here. You know, the MIAA is so, you know, close-knit and every team, you know, the best team in MIAA would, would do very well on Long Island. Um, but the, you know, the, whether it's, you know, one of the ice lips or one of the hills east, you know, it's hills east or it's hills west or it's Smithtown west, Smithtown east. I mean, there's so many different programs that's going to have a kid for every school in the country, and that's so that's why everybody goes here. And then you're going to find blue collar kids who parents told them how it is, made them work for it because they had to work for it. Mm -hmm. and, and the taxes are crazy on Long Island, right? <laughs> so the parents have to work, work hard so they don't let their kid, you know, the most of part, most part of them, most of them um, force the kids Do to you work like hard. kids who mow their own lawns? That's great. Yeah, mow your own lawn. Do your own laundry. It's my favorite story. My mother is doing my own laundry at 10 because he wanted his shorts. You know, I had this pair of basketball shorts I wanted to wear. So she said, Mike, you can wash them yourself. I'll show you how to do it. All right, let me see. And so I started doing my own laundry. At That's 10 years it. old? It's something like that. That's great. I, it might even be even younger. She might even say younger. Yeah, it was probably eight. Yeah, you know what? It's probably no seven. <laughs> <laughs> but what about the non-traditional kids? There's some great players around the country. All now. over the country. We got a couple of them. So you like when um, they come to Long Island too and compete and say, hey, I can hang with those kids. For sure. Or, yeah. or go to any of the big tournaments that you know are in Maryland or all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, but again, again, we get paid to do this. Um, and so we travel. You know, I've been right. to Denver, I've been to California, I've been to Florida, I'm going to Indiana. Um, we travel places. Mm -hmm. you know? So if you're a Division One lacrosse player, we're, we are paid to find you. Mm -hmm. um, and again, but you got to be, it, it comes back to academics. You got to be a great student. You watch a lot of film, Slip? Uh, some, some, um, some. Yeah, not much. You know, I think if a kid, if, if I know the kid, I want to watch it. Um, if I don't know the kid, I get, I get 30 to 50 emails a day right now. Right. So how do you know if you're getting recruited? If I'm responding to you with like six sentences and has my cell phone on it, mm -hmm. you know, because there's just not enough kids, not enough time to respond to everybody. So you get a generic. So, you know, it's like most coaches are going to just, you're going to have, if there's, if there's good paragraph structure, there's a really good chance the coach just clicked to click to respond to you. <laughs> right. If there's not good paragraph structure and they're trying to get it in, you know, there's a are good chance. Are you saying there's, there's typos in your, in oh, your emails? Not necessarily think? typos. He's but a bomber. Because you're a bomber. It's, that, well, the bomb, well, sports studies, minor coaching. I, I, <laughs> I, I played kickball and read scoreboards for four years, you know? <laughs> um, that's not true. Ithaca College is a great place. It's the best. Um, it's a great place. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's more personal, mm -hmm. you know? And, and if there's a cell phone on there, you're, pr you're probably getting a real response just because if, you know, if I gave my cell phone out to every, yeah. every Jimmy and Joe that emailed me, I, 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 my girlfriend would kill me. God. <laughs> she already wants to kill you. you no, she that. doesn't. She's an amazing No, woman. she loves you. You want to give her a shout out? Hi, Jess. Hey. That's, that's all I needed. All that's right. it? I hope you guys enjoyed uh, your time here listening to Coach Slipple. You enjoy yourself? This is great. Yeah. I need more of this. <laughs> this is, I might, you know. Well, you can just come to your beach house on Long Island, and if you know, he's Cliff, not on the beach. Cliff wants to welcome you back to the studio, you're Link welcome. Link isn't to. on the beach. He he's he's buy cool. these Dreamcast studio services. Oh, oh. that's right. Wow! Starting Whoa, at that's cheap. Per show, the that Streamcast Network, which uh, we are a part of, has services. So you can set up your own. We can literally start I, the Mike Slipple. We could show. do it in Boston. Oh, we should do that. We can do it from Boston, right, Cliff? Do you have the ability to do it now? Studio in Boston and direct it from here. I love it. Perfect. Well, our jobs are really stressful. I might need a new one one day, you know, or maybe I'll get fired. Who knows? <laughs> Got to get going now. I need cash. <laughs> nice. I like him. Yeah, he's very honest. He is. Good. Just like you. That's why we get along. That's life. Um, More people should be honest. Frank, do we have a show closed, or are we just going to? Uh, yeah, I can roll the uh, BYG stuff. All right, well, um, if you want to if you want to watch more of Mike Slippo, you can actually watch us on repeat on our website, byglacrosse.com. We really appreciate your time and your insight tonight, Mike. Thanks. You've definitely uh, educated someone out there. Hopefully. I usually learn something talking to you, so I learned something. Usually? <laughs> Most of the time. God, this is insulting, Mike. I yeah, know, it's. Uh, it's every this is why time. I stay in Chelsea's room when I sleep over. <laughs> Not Corey's. That's right. I don't even have a bed in my room. No, you do now. Actually. I just put your bed put back. In there. Yeah, that's for Sobolek. I'm surprised he was able to put yeah, for Max. Yeah. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>